The Cleveland Browns invested heavily in the running back room in 2022 with almost eight and a half million dollars committed to two guys who didn't do much. It's going to change in 2023. There's going to be need some help for Nick Chubb. We're going to talk about that, the way it's going to work out, and maybe some names as the Cleveland Browns are probably going to go to look to go young in the running back room, which means draft eligible players not going the free agency route. All this and more on your latest Locked on Browns. You are Locked on Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things to Oak Pound, LGB on the LLB, the Locked On Browns podcast brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. As always, we try to bring you the best content we can here. Riding solo today, uh, G. Bush been through a little things. I know he's stared a little bit on social media, so you I kind of understand the situation Garrett and his family are going through right now. But we still got work to get done while the big man uh, does all he can for his family as they are you know, dealing with some tough times over at the Bush household. We're going to get some thoughts here today on the running back room. But first and foremost, today's episode of Locked On Browns is presented to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Now, as we were saying here, we're going to get to some things in the running back room. Uh, first off, it's going to change the focus on the running game. Um, we're going to get into the second segment, some running backs that I think are in the 2023 NFL draft that could be of some service to the Cleveland Browns. And we'll tie it all together in segment three and kind of give you a little bit more uh, idea and view of the way the Browns offense is going to shift in 2023. First and foremost, in 2023, you are going into the season with a 17-game regular season where you assume Deshaun Watson is going to be your quarterback week in, week out. You're going to start to trend towards his strength. Um, for all the lovely conversations that we had the entire 2022 season about you know whether or not the Browns are running the ball enough, not running it enough, well, if Nick Chubb gets 20 amounts of carry, this team ran the ball almost 48%. 48%. That is a staggering, staggering amount. And you look at it this way. You look at some of the teams succeeding here right now. Uh, the teams in the playoffs, the Chiefs, the run is usually secondary, set up by the pass. Philadelphia Eagles built a little bit differently uh, as you know they you know, focus a little bit more, I would say, on the run game you know, and pass when they need to, and they have the ability to ice games late in the games with their running game as well. You get to the Cincinnati Bengals. It is all about Joe Burrow first. We all know that. Um, and if you saw last week against the Buffalo Bills, Joe Burrow got it going early. They got a lead. Then the defense had to lighten up secondary. Joe Mixon finds his way to a 100-yard day. You look at the team like the San Francisco 49ers. Um, keep in mind, a little bit different there when you're playing with a rookie third-string quarterback in Brock Purdy who's absolutely playing tremendous, tremendous football to this point. Uh, but you have Christian McCaffrey, which they invested so highly in. You can use Debo Samuel as well. They are not afraid to run the ball with anybody on that team. Even Mitchell, second-string running backs, gets some meaningful carries. In you know, in strong circumstances, not when the game is over, they trust him. Obviously, Mitchell in big situations. Now, when you figure that the Browns ran the ball forty eight percent of that time, and that number is probably going to creep back closer to forty percent of the time, you know, maybe 42, 43, But there is going to be less physical runs called next year. You didn't pay two hundred thirty eight million dollars to Deshaun with Watson to basically have him just be the guy who's going to hand the ball off to Nick Chubb. There's other factors in that as well. With the contract you gave and the money that you gave to Nick Chubb, 
You want longevity over the contract. You want Nick Chubb to be as fresh as he possibly can over the length of said contract. So those are factors you're going to look at. Biggest issue the Browns had last year in the running back room. It looked on paper like it was a really, really deep room. You had Nick Chubb. You had Kareem Hunt. You had Dearness Johnson. You had Demetri Felton. You had Jerome Ford. But when all actuality, you weren't getting any real production from Kareem Hunt. Kareem at $6 million on the books for last year. It seems like the, the, the burst, and we've always talked about this, Kareem was never going to be confused with one of the fastest running backs in the NFL. But as Kareem's time here in Cleveland went on, a little bit of the burst was there. And one of the things that hurt Kareem in that nature is Kareem didn't necessarily have the patience to succeed behind the offensive line like the Cleveland Browns. You're trying to get these guys when they're pulling, you're basically riding on their hip, letting them dictate where the hole is. Kareem, that's never really been his running style, runs like his hair is on fire, was still successful early in his career here in Cleveland, but with the lost step, not willing to adapt to reading the way the blocking was being put in front of him, it, it made it difficult for Kareem. And I go back to the second Bengal game. They gave him an opportunity on fourth and one. And because they didn't trust his burst, they lined him up as the only running back in the backfield. But they lined him back up as a fullback, making sure he had the extra step, uh, the extra time to get to the hole and get first down. Get the first down. Mike Hilton from the Bengals still almost brought him down on that play. So that's kind of what we are talking about, you know, there. Dearness Johnson, that whole situation, and, you know, we all love Dearness and what Dearness did in 2021, but it almost felt weird that you brought back both Hunt and Dearness. Yes, they tried to move them both, did not get compensation that they felt was worthy for either player, but you ended up with two guys that you really never called their number. Dearness was even a worse situation, sadly, than Kareem. Uh, Dearness had the better 2021 season, was healthy for most of the season. We saw 100-yard production. We saw weeks where he was very, very, uh, you know, very proficient in getting the job done, whether it was the Patriots game, granted that one didn't go that way, the Thursday night game in 2021 against the Denver Broncos. But two and a half million dollars to Dearness Johnson to basically be a glorified special teamer. Um, the Browns cannot afford this type of money to guys who are not going to be part of the offense. So that is going to be eight and a half million dollars coming off the books as the Browns say goodbye to Kareem Hunt, as they say goodbye to Dearness Johnson. Players that had good runs in their time here, but this running back room now, it's Nick Chubb and what can help Nick Chubb. And we're going to get to that in segment two here, talking about some of those guys. Jerome Ford, still a factor here. Um, I don't think their ideal situation is to have Jerome Ford as a kick returner in 2023, even though he excelled. I would say, I would say he excelled. I think, you know, that was one of the bright spots of the 2022 season that maybe did not get spoken about enough was the fact that Jerome Ford was fantastic as a kick return. The only problem is we didn't get enough evaluation of Jerome Ford playing the running back position. Um, he's going to get his chance, but the Browns have to bring in somebody else here. This is money that's not going to be spent in free agency. Again, they spent $8.5 million on two veteran backs last year to play behind Nick Chubb. Neither got it done. They need to have more money to be able to apply to the defensive side of the ball. So you are going to get two players like um, – Kareem Hunt, Dearness Johnson coming off the books, eight and a half million to the Cleveland Browns. And again, that's going to go towards aiding the defensive side of the ball. I'm going to switch it up here. There are some backs in this draft that I think would be great, great fits for the Cleveland Browns. We are going to get to that locked on Browns. Continue to roll here. Your host, Jeff Lloyd. We appreciate you all being along for the ride. Prize picks this weekend, two games Sunday, NFC Championship, AFC Championship. What are you looking for? Are you looking for running backs to have big day? Are you looking for maybe both Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow to put up over 300 yards receiving? If you are, prize picks is where you need to be. It's simple. It's easy. You put in a lineup. You see what the spreads are uh, put for each player. You know, Do you like? Are you in or are you not? How does it work? You put two to six. You pick two to six players, and if they go score more or less than the prize pick projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. 
Prize Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. It includes the NFL, the NBA, MLB, NHL, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, heck, even disc golf. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Safe in fast withdrawals currently operational in over 30 states and canada download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports first time users can receive a 100 instant deposit match up to 100 with the promo code locked on if you deposit 100 prize picks will give you 100 if you deposit 50 prize picks will give you 50 don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 dollars Continuing on here, we appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day, whether it's on your favorite podcast platform, whether it is on YouTube, or uh, if you have Roku, go ahead, open up Roku, type in Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will find the Locked On Browns podcast, the Locked On Guardians podcast, the Locked On Cavaliers podcast. You will also find the ultimate Cleveland sports show, G. Bush and the crew over there who do a fantastic job every single day analyzing all your favorite action in the Cleveland sports scene. We continue on here. Now, I have mentioned that there are some running backs that I think that are going to be in this draft class that are going to be some really, really great fits for your Cleveland Browns. And I'm going to give you a couple names to start off the bat. One for me right off the bat from the University of Georgia, and obviously Buckeye fans, you guys got to see him firsthand during the playoffs. Kenny McIntosh. The thing that draws me to Kenny McIntosh is 76 career receptions. We know what Nick Chubb is. We know what his strengths are. We know what his weaknesses are. Nick can be an asset in the passing game, but there has to be a time where Nick Chubb can come off the field, get his rest, you know, be maximum playing speed when he's on the field. I know everybody feed him, feed him, feed him, feed him, feed him. That is not the way an analytic run franchise looks at a player. They want their player to be the best for every rep that he takes. So you need to find people to spell him. Kenny McIntosh from Georgia, like I said, 76 career receptions. Uh, Yards, poor reception, average of 11.3. Over 24 career touchdowns in four years. Down in Athens playing for the Bulldogs. He's played in the big games. He's played against the big opponents. He's played against the tough opponents. This is a guy that can come in here and spell Nick Chubb. He can come in and be a factor in the passing game. You guys all saw uh, you know, him take the smoke screen to the house against the Buckeyes in the playoffs. Kenny McIntosh, real, legit player, proven track record. Sean Tucker, University of Syracuse. If you don't know about Sean Tucker, go ahead and check out Sean Tucker. Career 5.4 yards per carry, 64 receptions in his career up at Syracuse, 9.7 per carry, 27 touchdowns in his time at Syracuse. Three seasons, he's leaving school early. Sean Tucker, very, very impressive back. Good speed, good long speed, good wiggle. A uh, player like Sean Tucker is going to rise during the draft cycle. Now, where do these players go? These players, you know, the Browns right now sitting with the second round pick of 42. The Browns also with their compensatory pick uh, from, you know, Kwesi taking the job with the Minnesota Vikings. I would not be surprised if Cleveland Browns do draft, uh, do trade down again, like they did last year. The Browns want to get to that, you know, 50 to 170 spot in the draft. That's if you don't have a first round pick, you basically want to try and get yourself, you know, some, I don't want to say proven commodities because obviously anybody in day three is not a proven commodity, but you want to get yourself into that upper echelon of the draft. You don't want to draft four guys in the 200s. The Browns right now don't have the ammunition to draft high. Either so they're not going to trade up. They don't really have assets to trade up. Uh, so you're looking for players that are going to go into this range. Kenny McIntosh is going to fall into this range. Sean Tucker from Syracuse is going to fall into this lane range. And just one is not necessarily the prototypical receiving back that maybe McIntosh can give you, that maybe Sean Tucker can give you. Uh, but uh, Tank Bigsby out of Auburn, career down at Auburn, again, playing in the SEC, 5.4 yards per carry, 24 career touchdowns in his time for Auburn, 60 two receptions the average for him a little bit lower 7.3 on his but 
you're starting to get the vision here. Look, these guys are going to come in and they're going to have to be a part of the passing game because that is usually when the Browns look to spell Nick Chubb. So A number one, can you be a part of the receiving game? All of these guys proven track records that they can be dangerous as receivers. We've already seen it. And for all of these guys, one in the ACC, two in the SEC, they've done it against big opponents. They've done it against big time teams. They played all the talent that they're going to see in the NFL. So all of that adds up. All of that fits in as far as being a need here for the Cleveland Browns. The other thing is, is all of these guys are accomplished enough runners that if the opportunity is called or Nick is missing time, that they can go in there and give you a legit workload. They can go in there and look like what you expect you're going to get from Nick Chubb. You have this big investment in your offensive line. And when we get to offensive line, we'll talk about whether or not Ethan Posick remains part of this offensive line. That one could get tricky, but we'll save that story for another day, obviously. But you have this. And the biggest thing is, is you need to be able to ice out games. The Browns, looking like a franchise who thinks they are not that far away, although right now, looking at it, looking at the Bengals, looking at Joe Burrow, maybe it does feel further away than it is. I'm not going to deny that by any means whatsoever. But you look at this and you want to figure that you were going to be a team who is better defensively. You were going to be a team with leads late in games. That is where your your true your money running of the football is going to come. Like Joe Mixon last week against the Buffalo Bills. You games, and we saw this in 2020, games where Nick Chubb was given the ball with the lead in the fourth quarter. And now you're talking about closing out wins, not trying to get a win. Why can't you, you know, using Nick Chubb when you're behind doesn't also, doesn't normally equate to the correct recipe for success. It's supposed to be a mix of your passing game and your running game which is going to change. Like I said, that 48%, the Browns ran the ball in 2022. That is not going to be the case in 2023. You were going to get more opportunities for Deshaun Watson. You were going to get more opportunities for Mari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Njoku. These guys are going to be bigger factors for the Cleveland Browns in 2023. Nick Chubb's role, the running back role, is going to be minimalized a little bit. Doesn't mean there's still not going to be opportunities. There's still not going to be weeks where Nick puts up fantastic numbers because he will. He is just an absolute beast. He's a consummate pro. But there is going to be some tweaking to the way the Browns run their offensive side of the ball. Deshaun Watson, Kevin Stefanski, they need to get this right. They need to get on the same page or the two of them are going to be in, in some serious issues. You know, Deshaun Watson is going to look like a guy who is completely overpaid. And Coach Stefanski is most likely a guy who is going to be looking for work. Difficult situation to be in, but potential is there. And there really shouldn't be any excuses. This offense needs to be better than it was in 2022. Whether or not you want to count in the Deshaun Watson missing the time that he did, that's fine. Either way, there needs to be greater improvement from the Cleveland Browns on the offensive side of the ball and certainly through the passing game. I'm going to switch it up here now. We are excited to announce a brand new sponsor to the Locked On Podcast Network. The NFL playoffs are here. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because of the number one sports book in America. That's right, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers, join today to get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. Same game parlay, especially with two games on Sunday, AFC Championship, NFC Championship. Here's what you're looking to do. Who's going to be the first guy to score a touchdown? You can bet on that. Is Patrick Mahomes going to throw for over 300 yards? You can bet that. You can bet individual prop lines. Which running back is going to go north of 37 and a half yards if it's not a starting running back? Or north of 90 yards if it's a starting running back? Will Travis Kelsey get more than 10 receptions? This is all stuff you can do all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So football fans, don't miss out. Place your first 
$5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. We continue on here. Jeff Lloyd, your host, Locked On Browns podcast, as we continue to roll on through here and discuss where the Browns running back room is currently and where the Browns running back room is headed to be in 2022. I'm sorry, in 2023. So what we are going to continue to roll through here is with myself talking more on this running back position. It is going to be cropped down. The overall amount of running the football is not going to be the same in 2023 as it was in 2022. There's going to be less opportunity. You paid a steep price to get a quarterback in here, and we have not seen it yet, but no faith has been lost in the building in Berea that Deshaun Watson can still perform at a level of a top quarterback in the NFL. Six-game stretch under his belt. Obviously, I'd say if you want to say more bad than good in 2022 from Deshaun Watson, I'm probably not going to lie with you. Um, I, I think you'd be looking through rose-colored glasses if you said that Deshaun Watson's play in 2022 you know, was better than it was bad. It's just not the case. I mean, I think we all know it. We're all not going to fool ourselves in you know, knowing it. We know that the capabilities of Deshaun Watson are better, but what it is is you've got two years of rust off. you got to develop a relationship between Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Njoku, and, of course, Deshaun Watson. Now the running game, look, you know, and for it's been out there and floated about, and I honestly just can't stand it. Um, And this also comes down to the reason that Nick Chubb was given the extension that he was giving. You need certain types of players in your building. You want players that you can point to other players, whether they're rookies, whether they're players who aren't towing the line and basically say, this is how you're expected to perform as a member of this team, as an employee of this organization. You have guys like Miles Garrett. You have guys like Joe Batonio. You have guys like Nick Chubb. These are the guys that got paid. These are the guys that are you know, going to be longevity players here for the Cleveland Browns because, A, of their play, because of, B, the type of people that they are, the way they conduct their business. This is crucial. It, 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 there's just no other way around it. You need leaders. You need guys. And I'm not saying they have to be vocal leaders. You need leaders to show everybody else what is acceptable and was what is not acceptable. It, it, it's as simple as that. And you have a room here. And for the most part, you know, Kareem Hunt had his little issue over the summer, you know, little mini sit in, sit out, whatever you want to call it where he was hoping to get more money from the Browns, even asked for a trade. The Browns would have been willing to accommodate a trade. Nobody came for an asking price the Browns felt comfortable with. To Ernest Johnson, quiet, smart soldier, um, probably thought he was going to be in for a, a role. Figured he was going to have some sort of role. I mean, 2021, the Ernest Johnson, big, big factor for this team. 2022, you had to basically find a microscope to find him. And when you did find him, it was most likely covering kicks, things of that nature. So the Browns took $8.5 million of salary, committed it to two running backs who barely played and only one participated on special teams. This is things that players on their first contracts are supposed to be doing, covering kicks, fighting for whatever role they can get on the offensive side of the ball, i.e. Jerome Ford, who you saw become a very, very solid kick returner for the Browns in 2022. Only problem is we still don't have much of an evaluation on Jerome Ford going into 2023. I think you've got a pretty good player. Uh, I saw a couple of sparks here and there, certainly from the kick returns. Uh, you know, a couple of nice carries against uh, you know, Washington. You know, uh, which you, you saw the juice there. You certainly noticed he was a faster player than Kareem Hunt is at this state, day, you know, state of his career. But the Browns cannot afford to have any type of money committed to something that is not going to produce for them. That's why this room is going to get vastly younger with Hunt and Dearness Johnson going on. Jerome Ford will stick around. Demetri Felton, I haven't mentioned. I, I I don't know where it goes with Demetri Felton. There's a lot of players similar to him for the Browns between Jakeen Grant, Michael Woods. All of these guys are kind of in the same area. I don't think I see, you know, Felton being here in 2023. He'll be here for training camp. I don't know if he's a guy that's going to really have an opportunity to make the final roster for the Browns. We've talked about players, 
in the 2023 draft that I think are fits at the running back position. Kenny McIntosh from Georgia, obviously a solid running back, but really, really the 76 receptions over his time in Athens is something that I put my eyes on. Sean Tucker. Sean Tucker looks like a running back that can be a solid dual threat in the NFL. 5.4 yards per carry, playing up in Syracuse behind their offensive line, 64 career receptions for a 9.7 average. Tank Bigsby from Auburn. More probably of a pure runner than he probably, you know, the receiving the 62 receptions is a nice number. But if you're looking for a guy who would be able to, you know, fill in if you had to miss, you know, Nick, Nick, if Nick Chubb had to miss a ball game, had to miss a start, you put in a Tank Bigsby, he's familiar with the workload as a ball carrier. Obviously, he did it in the SEC. Another guy, only three years at Auburn. So the age should match up to what the Cleveland Browns are looking for at the position. Um, these are guys that I think all can help. I think these are all guys that the Browns are going to have their eyes on. Other running backs are going to come, uh, you know, pass through the radar starting this, next week. Obviously, Shrine Bowl, Senior Bowl kicking off next week. Then we get to the combine, start to get more ideas about the athleticism of these players, the athletic ability. Um, you'll get ages nailed down for players, as we know that is a big factor in the way the Cleveland Browns view their draft prospects. So the running back room, it's going to be vastly different, in my opinion, uh, in 2023 as you move on from Kareem, as you move on from Ernest, Both of these guys had their days where you know they were solid, solid players for the Cleveland Browns, um, solid contributors for the Cleveland Browns. But the age, the, the, the slip in play, and the cost, the Browns need to generate more money. We all know this, and we all know there's easy avenues to generate more money. Um, but if you're moving on from John Johnson the third, you need money to apply to a true free safety for Jim Schwartz. You need to do a tremendous amount of work on this defensive line, and it's going to cost money to get that done as well. Then you have to figure out the entire linebacker room. Um, when we get to that episode, as far as you know, di discussing you know where the room was in 2022 and where the room will be in 2023, that is going to be a huge, huge mystery episode. That was going to be a, a fun one to go through, but it's certainly a lot of work involved. Uh, Browns have money. They have to reapply it differently. They have to focus more on the defensive side of the ball. So this is your run. This was your running back review as we head, you know, transition from 2022 to 2023. Uh, a lot of off season of work to get here, uh, to get to here on Locked On Browns. Make sure you're always checking out Locked On Browns as your first listen every single day. Make sure you're checking out the Locked On NFL podcast every single day as your first listen. As always, we appreciate everybody who takes the time to make Locked On Browns your first listen, whether it is on your favorite podcast app, whether it is on YouTube. Or if you do, in fact, have Roku, go ahead, search Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will find the Locked On Browns podcast, Cavaliers, Guardians, G. Bush and the crew over at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. We can fill you up for three and a half hours a day talking about all your favorite Cleveland sports. So again, running back room, big changes coming. Nick's going to need some help. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB. On the LOB, let's go Browns.